So in our last workshop, we did an overview of a variety of tools that you may be interested in using to help promote your scholarship. And today we're going to look at three different tools and how to create accounts on those. And the first is Google Scholar. Many of us already have a Google account that we've had for personal reasons. You also know that you can create a Google account that is associated with your TU email address and you just don't create the email box or the inbox that goes along with it. I'm going to go and demonstrate now how to create a Google Scholar account. So the first thing I want to do is sign in. And I'm going to sign in using Lisa Barber. And you can see once I've signed in, I have my profile image up here. And over here you'll see I have my library and my profile. So to create your Google Scholar profile, what you're going to do is you're actually going to click on my profile over here. And as you can see right now, it's an unknown affiliation, no verified email, and that's the way it's going to be until you actually set up your profile. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go in and edit our information. You'll notice that when you click on the edit profile, there's a couple of things that you can put in here. Now, for our purposes, you're going to put in, obviously, Toro University, California here, and you would put in your at tu.eu email address here. So that will verify you as being a verified user of the institution. You can also put in some areas of interest. So if there is a specific topic, that is of interest to you, you can add that in there. If you have a home page or if you would like to use your Toro University's faculty page, that's something else you can add in here. And the key thing in all of this is you want to click make my profile public. And then when you're done all of that, you're just going to click on save. Now with your profile updated, if there were things that you left out, they will appear up here and you'll note that until you actually put in your verified email address with your institution that your profile won't show up in public search results. If you did include your institutional email address when you're creating your profile you would have gotten an email at your at tu.edu email address asking you to verify the fact that you are indeed you and once you verified that it'll actually show up on your profile but until you click that verify button that shows up in that email that gets sent to your at tu.edu email address you will continue to be unverified so once you've got that done, you'll notice that right now there are no articles in this profile. So if you want to add some articles, what you want to do is come over here to this plus sign. Once you click on the plus sign, you'll see that you can add article groups, you can add articles, or add articles manually. One of the things we want to do is, at least initially, is just add articles and see if we can find things. Because what will happen is Google Scholar will search based upon your name for things that are out there and try to determine whether or not these are you. So as I look at this list here, this one here is accurate. And by the looks of it, that's probably the only accurate one that is there of the list. So once I've got the ones that I wanted, there's one article, I'm going to come up here and click on the check mark and you'll see this article gets added to your profile. Now if there are other items that you would like added to your profile you can also go in and manually add them. So if I click on the plus sign again I can go and add an article manually and what I've done here is I've actually gone and I found this particular article it's actually a, a master's thesis and I'm gonna want to add in that so let me start copying and pasting the items over. So it's a thesis. The title is Understanding Oncology Nurses Grief. The author is Lisa C. Barber. The publication date is 
2016. The institution is Athabasca University. And that's all that they allow you to write for theses. So I can go and click on the plus sign here, and you can see now that it's in there as well. And because I've put it in there, you'll notice that it's actually already found a the item that it was in Google Scholar because I didn't add the PDF there. So because I put in that amount of information, you notice I didn't copy and paste the description in there either. So that's another thing that it does. So it went out and searched for that particular item as I added it, and then it automatically added it to my Google Scholar profile with those items in there. So now both of the articles that I wanted to put in, the one that was automatically brought in, and then the one that I manually brought in are on my profile. And as you can see here, the same aspects of what you would normally find in Google Scholar are available here. So I can see my cited by, you can see my H index over here and my citations. If there were any co-authors associated with either of the items that I had added and they had Google Scholar profiles, they would show up just beneath. Now one of the limitations of the way in which I've got this profile set up is if you go and search on Google Scholar now for this individual, you'll notice that it's still not underlined. Like you can see this D Adams here is underlined, which means that their profile is public. And if I were to click on it, it takes me to their profile. The reason for that is because they have a verified email address at their institution. Because LC Barber doesn't have the verified email address at their institution right now, they are do not have a public profile. So that's the reason why adding this verified email address to your profile using your Toro University email address is so important. So now just to show you the difference in a completed profile, you'll notice there are no boxes across the top and we do have a verified email address. What that means is when we go to Google Scholar and search for the individual, not only does their user profile show up right at the top, but when you look at their individual pieces of work, you'll see now their name is underlined, which means I can click on them and it will bring me to their profile. So that's a quick and basic way to set up a Google Scholar profile.